Hello everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. I'm sitting in my garden this morning before the sun hits it. And it's like a crazy, crazy garden. I've got this crazy bird, which is a spotted toey. I've been t yelling at him and telling him to knock it off. He's beating up all the windows. Look at that. He beats up the windows. He beats up anything he can see himself with. I don't know. He thinks it's another male, and he's trying to scare the male off. And this goes on most of the day. I even have a curtain there, and he can still see a reflection. Got a dove sitting there eating. Got the goldfinches coming in. I'm just kind of watching the birds. They're, I've got a nest behind me. They're feeding babies. They keep coming back and forth. And I just thought it was so beautiful and so peaceful. Let's see. So what do I want to talk about this morning? Going to get more solar fountains together. I now have too many gardens to take care of, but I love it. You know what? It's fine. I've got this garden. I've got the front garden. I've got the garden along the very back when you go through the gates. And then, of course, I've got my driveway garden. And I still have my deck. That's a lot of gardens. But, you know, little by little, yes, he won't go away. You know, here, let me tell you a story on spotted toeys. They are one of the most shyest birds, if that's a word, shyest. They see you and they disappear. I even saw somebody put something on YouTube and he had all the birds that were in this park. It was a park and he said the only bird he cannot get is the spotted toey. I saw this a while ago because they're so shy that the moment they see you, they disappear. Well, they did do that here. I mean, they were so rare, I only saw them when I was in the house and I would look outside and I would see them maybe come out to eat some seed and look around and forage. And, and then as soon as they saw me through the window, a movement or something, they would turn around and just disappear. So that's the way it's been for quite a few years. But last year, the spotted toeys had a lot of babies. And you could tell the babies because the babies have no color. They're very washed out. Like these have a lot of color. This one's a little smaller than the other one. I'm going to presume that that is his female. And that's why he's beating up the window. If you can see, she's sitting above the dove and she's smaller. But what I think happened last year, going back to last year, he's going to go beat something up. Look at that, the tin can on the bottom. Yeah, that's his female. Um, is they had a lot of babies. And by having a lot of babies and me sitting in the garden, I just became part of the garden. I'm part of the environment. So they kind of ignore me and do their own thing. They don't care. I mean, I'm sitting right here. He's flying all over the place and he's just so busy and he's coming in to eat and he's coming in to beat things up. And he just took off with his hen. So being part of the environment and knowing that I'm no longer a threat that's why I think they're so tame now. And they will come right out. He literally is sitting, I'm going to say, I'm sitting at this table here with my coffee. Um, eight feet. He came, I mean, he comes around here and forages around the ground here. And that's basically it. I just thought he'd come out and have coffee. So that's what I'm doing. It's more of an update. I'm going to start doing a lot more solar fountains. I just did the one on that globe. There's not a lot of birds out right now. I don't know if they came in earlier or if they're waiting, if they're hiding out because it's supposed to be warm. But that globe that I put together, the solar panel, I'll put the link on this. That was so much fun to make, but you can use a, a just a plain old bowl. If you've got a bowl, that is fantastic because I've got that ball in the background and hummingbirds as I sit here, they've been coming back and forth to the ball and they really like that. And then they come to the bowl all day, the, this one, I should say, the globe. And here, I'll walk over here for a minute and show you. There's just so many things you can do with that. See, that's a bowl. That's nothing than one of my kids' cereal bowls. And that's on a bucket. We'll get into that. I believe I've got the details when I just put that one together. And the solar panel is way up on top. And what you want to do is you want to position it. Let's back up real quick. I had a question on how do you position the solar panel. Now, if you look, you see that the sun hasn't come through yet. And the sun's going to come across and it, you know, differently. It does change with the season. 
But what you want to do is, see that's a solar panel up there. You want to position your panels so you can move them. You don't have to move them every day. You're just going to move them little by little. That one, to me, is a mistake. I thought it would be a great idea. It's too high. Birds perch on them and you need to, you know, when you're watering your garden, sometimes water them down. It could be weeks so you have to water it. But you need to water them down. It's just way too high. I've, I've got them on these makeshift things I made from tomato poles. And that I don't like. I actually like the cottage cheese containers and that you can paint up and they kind of disappear and you can hide all the extra cord inside. So that works out really good with the units that I buy. So I would say you want it hand levels. So you could walk up, even that one, I'm changing that up as soon as I get to it. I don't need something that's eight feet, 10 feet up in the air. I like when I can walk over and wipe my hand on him. And once I get the garden going, cause I am working in here, let me back up a little bit. As I'm working in here, I'm going to position them the way I really want. Right now, they're just kind of stuck because I've got them all attached to these poles, which is really cool. And I can move them. You just pull them out. It's a tomato steak. And move them. So you position it towards the sun. Like, let's see, the sun hasn't quite come up here. See, this is just starting now. Because this panel, let's see, this one is this one. See, and they do get dirty and you want to clean them a little bit. And there's a way to even clean them better if they get too foggy, sanding them down. See, that one's turned the other way. I'm not even sure which one. And it doesn't matter. It's still working. This panel is going to this one that is already starting to move and do its thing. It's just a bowl with rocks and an old salt and pepper shaker I had of a man and a crocodile. <laughs> but you want to just position them. And see, I can turn them if the sun was coming up. I could turn it even a little bit more and then it would get more sun, but the sun really has not come through the trees yet. So you want to make it where you can move it. You don't want to just lay it in plants. I've done that. You can do it, but they get knocked. They fall over. And so that's the, the only, only thing. You want to make sure you're going to put it where it gets the most sun. And it is true that sometimes as the sun goes across the sky that you may, it may shut off. You may lose the sun, the strength. You'll also find out that the stronger the sun is, the faster sometimes the pumps go. So if it's a cloudy day, they run slow and that's perfectly fine. But that's it. I just thought I'd sit in here and just look around and decide what I'm going to do today because I do want to do a lot of stuff in the garden. I've got a little bit of work to do. And when I finish my regular work, then I think I am going to work in the garden. I like working in the morning. It's like the perfect time to work. I don't have to mess around with any bees in the garden. They're not quite out. I saw one bee. Later on, there's a ton of bees and it's so strong and sunny right now. And so I don't like working during the sun. I put a hat on and stuff, but, and then I'd work a lot at night and that works really good there. See the humming, I don't know if you can see the hummingbird back there. He's on the geranium. I don't know what they get from the geranium. Let's see if we can look. No, nope, he zipped off already. And then they've got this, this one. This one I really like. This one is electric. But the ball, they like to sit on the ball. That's why I made the globe. Because they really like, see these haven't turned on yet. See this is in the shade. But if you lift it, see this, where's this one go? I think it goes there. No, I can't lift it for sun. There's no sun here yet. These will all start to turn on. And if you make multiple fountains, you can position multiple fountains in your yard. So you've got them going on at different times of the day too. So if you've got a shaded area, then you'll have one going on in another area. And remember, I've talked about this with the birds. The birds are important to me because by bringing in all these birds, and yes, I do feed them, but that brings in the seed eaters, which brings in the insect eaters. Well, they take care of it for us. The goldfinches come in and they're eating my greens and they're eating insects. And then I've got all the bush tits and we've got the Orioles. Oh, they're great. Orioles, oh my gosh, they pick up hornworms and everything. So the birds are important to me. So that's basically it. I just wanted to just say hello for today. And I hope to get, I've got a bunch of videos. I wanna show you how I made that cement one because that is just one of my favorite ones. And then the bowl one. And then again, if you don't want to get any attachments at all when you get a solar fountain, just drop the unit in a bowl. I've got, this. Look, you couldn't get any simpler than this. That is a floral pot 
which could be a flower pot upside down with a black bowl I had with some rocks and there's nothing to it it's just dropped in there and the birds come and drink on that and then of course I've got that one that one's not getting sun yet but that one the same thing it's just a bowl with rocks and then just dropped in there that's all you need they like the movement of the water and the other thing I have found is if you've got water moving at all you won't have to worry about mosquitoes even though you're going to dump out a simple bowl you know every uh, once a week or twice a week whatever you want to do the point is mosquitoes their their larva cannot be moved that's why they go to standing water only the moment it moves they, it doesn't work it, 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 they won't set so you don't end up mosquito with mosquito larvas. Now, if your solar fountain isn't working and you have just standing water, then yes, you could end up with mosquitoes. So, but as long as it's moving every day a little bit, you won't have a problem with mosquitoes. And then sometimes it's something simple like a little bowl like that. No pump, no nothing. The birds come in and take a bath on that too. So it's whatever you want to put out for the birds. They appreciate anything especially in the summer it's very important to them water you know that's that's life they need water just like your soil your compost all needs water and now they're coming in look at this the place is covered in birds they're starting to come in i can hear them they're full in the trees they're they've got a hummingbird on the ball back there we've got uh, the goldfinches some of the other birds have moved on for this summer. They move on and go to cooler areas like up in the hills and the mountains like the white crowns leave. I still have the house finches. So it, you have different birds at different times. Oh, the goldfinch chased off the, the hummingbird. So that's it. I thought I would say hello and just say, you know, get, think about solar fountains. Um, the panels, you can buy them online. I get mine on eBay. I'm sure Amazon's got them too. They used to be as low as $10. I have noticed they've gone up. They're closer to 20 the unit. But I've got units out here that have been running for over three years. There's ways of cleaning them up and fixing them if something happens to them. The only other thing I've had really bad happen is accidentally cut through the cord. Uh, Gary did it once, I did it once, and then we just spliced it, put it back together, and it worked fine. But these come with a really long cord, as you can see. So with the long cord, you can put the panel almost anywhere you want. And that's what's really nice away from the unit itself. So I guess with that, it was just morning, more of a hello. Plan on doing so much more. I've got this whole unit in here to take apart and plant in there. I'm going to move that bucket. I think I'm tired of looking at that bucket, which is nice, but I don't like the stake. So I'm going to change that all around. And that's what's really nice about these solar panel units, the, the kit. They're so easy. Oh, they, see how nice this is going now? They're so easy to just put together and move and change. You can change it all the time. It's not something permanent. Like I can't really do anything with this electric pump. I've only got two electrics in this yard. That one and the ball. I can't do anything with it. I can't move it and you can't really get to the pump because it's under the unit. Technically it's a pain. I have to get in there and flush it and clean it. But when it comes to the solar ones, so easy to move, clean, change, do what you want change it with the seasons it's just wonderful it's my favorite thing i should step back because all the birds are sitting here in the trees wondering why i'm standing next to the bowl and then um, let them come eat so i thought i'd say hello good morning i'm going to get my work done and i'm going to go work in the garden later have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow Bye bye